And in that vein, again, another concept from adaptive leadership is this concept of balcony and dance floor. And to me, it's about, although we probably won't have to have clutches and brakes for very much longer, but it's having your foot in the clutch, oh, sorry, and the accelerator at the same time. Because what you want to do is you want to, you actually need to be in two places at once. Because if you're down on the dance floor, and you're you know there and you're trying to get your point across but you you are literally so emotionally connected with what's going on you're failing to see what's happening in the room and how that's impacting other people so you need to be able to break away from that and sometimes if you're in a meeting and you're trying to get your message across just kick your chair back because that's amazing even that physical movement yeah. will disconnect you from being on the dance floor get on that balcony and actually observe what's going on so true, and there's just there's two quick examples I'll throw in there that um, come to mind as already mentioned. So we mentioned Pat Quinlan previously. Pat's biggest problem in terms of how he was leading his force at Jadaville and dealing with the situation was that he couldn't get up onto the balcony, uh, and those that were in the balcony couldn't communicate with him, those that were back at the headquarter element, and he had to manage around that. And and he was fortunate in how he did, but ultimately the problems that they had were were along with that nature, he couldn't get access to the balcony. Uh, and a personal experience, when I was in Darfur in uh, Sudan in 2009, uh, I was dealing, I was attached to a UN mission, and we were dealing with a lot of kidnaps at the time. And it was very difficult because you had, the, they were nationals of, of, a, of a particular state, so they would have people, diplomats and security people coming out. And you were dealing with the government of Sudan, and then you were dealing with tribal areas. The problem there was ultimately solved by a recognition of what you would call the yeah. balcony and the dance floor. Those of us who were in the dance floor needed to create a team that had access to the balcony back in Khartoum because the government there who were trying to stay aloof were fundamental to solving this problem because they would give a authority to the tribal leaders and it was finding those links and we couldn't have done it if we didn't have a team. We stopped working at the cold face, paused, sent a team back to develop relationships in Khartoum many, many miles away. And then those of us on the dance floor were able to function much better. So it eased the ways. And, and it's back to that point there about gaining perspective. We said it a minute ago in the Jahari window, you know, ask questions, be curious, find the links. But as Declan said, you need to be above the fray in order to do that. And there could be no, multiple balconies as well. So you never know. Very true. Yeah.